Hi guys, this is Jazz from Jazz Truck Driving School. So today we're going to be doing the air brake practical training, the one that we do in the air brake course. Now the theory we cover that in the classroom and now the practical, now we're going to do it in the truck. Okay, so we got uh, two parts over here, part one and part two. Part one got nine steps in total and we're going to do all the nine steps quick. And then we got the part two, which is a brake adjustment. Okay, so um, we'll start with the, the first step, which is secure the vehicle. Okay, how do you secure your vehicle? So you come to your truck, you make sure your parking brakes are on, okay? Your red and yellow knobs are pulled out, which they are, okay? And then you step outside to make sure that the wheels are chalked. So your wheels are chalked already, okay? All right, so this is your step number one. Step number two is test the low air warning device. So for that, we need to go inside the truck. Let's go inside. All right, so test the low air warning device, step number two. So for that, we need to start the engine. We turn on the key. Okay, we wait till the end appears on the gauge here. All right, and now we're gonna crank it. All right, so we start the engine. We make sure our pressure is between the normal operating range, which is uh, above 80 and below 145, which it is, it's above 100. So as long as it's above 100, you're good to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push up the brake pedal until the warning light comes on on the dashboard, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump the brake so as you see, as you can see, the needles are going down, going down, 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 until the warning light comes on on the dash here. There you go. That's my lower warning comes on around 65 psi, which is good because it's above 55 psi. If it was below 55, then it's bad. Okay. So that's how you do this. Okay. So that's your lower warning test. Then we have the test number three, which is called the test the air pressure buildup time. To test the air pressure buildup time, we need to make sure we bring the pressure down to 80. And from 85, we're going to start the count. Okay. All right. So we got the timer here. Now we're going to bring the pressure down to 80. So 80 will be somewhere above 75 here. So bring it down to 80, 80, 80 is somewhere. Let's assume that this is 80. And we're going to let it build to 85. And there you go, 85. And we start the timer at 85 and keep the RPM between 600 to 900 RPM from here. And then we're going to wait until it hits 100. And when it hits 100, we're going to check the clock and see how long it took us to reach 100. It should not take more than two minutes. If it takes more than two minutes, it's bad. If it takes less than two minutes, it's good. All right, so we reach 100 right here. And it took us 24 seconds, which is good because it's less than two minutes. If it takes more than two minutes, it's bad. Okay. Now the next test is the uh, confirm the air compressor governor setting. To do the governor setting, remember that cutout and cut in. So we gotta wait until the cutout happens on this truck over here. So as we can see on the gauge here, as our gauges are building the pressure, right? So we gotta wait until the gauges stop building it. And then we also have the air dryer on the truck so it's going to also purge the sound okay it's going to exhaust the air out of the air dryer so you're going to listen for that plus we're going to see when the needle stops moving okay so we're just going to wait until the needle stops moving and plus we'll hear the purge from the air dryer you can always speed up by pressing the gas pedal so I heard the sound here but from the air dryer plus our needle stopped moving at 125 so on this truck the cutout happens at 125 which is good because it's less than 145 if it happens more than 145 or it doesn't stop at all then that's bad okay so make sure the cutout happens way before 145 psi now since I found the cutout I need to find the cut in now the cutting usually is between like you know you got to subtract 20 to 25 psi below the cutout point but make sure it, it happens before 80 psi so let's try our formula first so 25 psi below the cutout so if my cutout is 125 i subtract 25 from that that should be my cut in so i bring it down to 100 so once i bring it down to 100 and i check to see if my needle builds up and make sure you check it to see if it's building yep so i can see that the pressure is building up 100 which is good because it's about 80. 
If it's below 80 and it's not building up at all, so that's bad. Okay, so that's how you find your cutout and cut in. So cut in on this truck is 100, which is good because it's above 80 psi. Okay. Next test is the step number five: test the air loss rate. To test the air loss, make sure your wheels are chopped. Okay, and you send the air into the system. So to send the air into the system, you gotta release both the brakes. So your tractor and your trailer both are pushed in. Okay, make sure. Your, your wheel chocks are there so that your truck doesn't roll okay so your tractor and parking brake and the trailer parking brakes they both are released and make sure your pressure is about 100 psi which it is so make sure it stays steady there because when you release the parking brakes the pressure goes down a bit right so make sure it stays steady Pressure is steady at 100 now, so I'm going to turn off the engine. All right, so I'm going to press the brake pedal and hold it for one minute. So I'm going to press it. I'm going to time it first. Okay, it's, and I press it, and I'm st timing it for a minute, and I'm going to check to see how many psi drops in a minute. Now, since we got a tractor and trailer, we should not lose more than. 4 psi. If it was a single tractor, you should not lose more than 3 psi. With a tractor and double trailer, you should not lose more than 6 psi. Okay, so far it looks good. I may have dropped about uh, 1 psi. Right, so 10 seconds left. It's two and one. So it's been a minute. So I might have lost about maybe one and a half to two pounds in total. So which is good because it's less than four PSI. If I lost more than four PSI, it's bad. And make sure you don't drive the vehicle, okay? Now, next step is test the automatic application function of the trailer brakes, okay? So, test the automatic application of the trailer brakes. Make sure you build the pressure above 100 again. Okay. So, I'm going to let the pressure build up a little bit faster. So the pressure is above 100. I'm going to release the, the trailer brakes here. Okay. So the pressure is released into the trailer. Make sure that your actual the gauge is still above 100. And now since you want to listen for an automatic application, what you need to do is you got to turn off your engine. Okay. So you turn off the engine. All right. So the air is gone to the trailer. Now we got to pull the trailer back out again. So the Okay, I heard the sound, the exhaust from the back, which is good. If I didn't hear that, then that's out of service. Now, next question is the test the tractor towing vehicle protection valve. So that means your TPV valve, which is behind the cab. So how do you check that one? So the, to check the tractor protection valve, make sure your uh, protection valves are secure, or your, uh, your spring brake control valve and your supply valve, they're secured, okay? Make sure none of these are released, okay? You can release the tractor brake, that's not a problem. So let's say you release the tractor, but make sure you don't release the trailer. All right, so now we have to step outside. Okay, so, and we're gonna uncouple or unhook the service line. So we can take the blue line out, we're gonna put it on the side over here, and then we're gonna press the brake pedal to listen for any air leak coming out of the service line. So we're gonna press the brake pedal I don't hear any air leak coming out of the service line, which is good. If I hear the air leak coming out of the service line, that means it's bad. And then you're gonna put it back onto the glad hands here on the coupler side, on the trailer side. Okay, so that completes our tractor protection valve. Okay. All right, so step number eight, test the spring brakes. To test the spring brakes, make sure brakes are up, already applied. The pressure is above 100, which it is. And now I have to go and uh, unchuck the wheels from the trailer.
spring brakes over here. So we've got two spring brake systems over here. So we've got one for the tractor, one for the trailer. So you got to check them both one at a time. Uh, they both are pulled right now. That means the both are on, so we can't check them both together, right? So we have to release one in order to check the other one. So if I want to check the tractor brakes, I need to release the trailer. If I want to check the trailer brakes, I need to release the tractor. So let's say I want to check this one first, right? So I need to push this one in. So tractor brakes are applied, okay? So I'm going to put on drive and try to go forward. And I hope that I don't move. And if I move, that means my spring brake system is not working on the tractor side. So I'll give the gas and I try to go forward. All right, I'm trying, trying, it's not moving anywhere. So that means my tractor parking brake system is working fine. I put it back on neutral. Now you need to check the trailer parking brakes, okay? And now you're gonna release the tractor. Okay, so again, we're gonna put on drive, we try to go forward and see if the trailer brakes are holding the tractor or not. Okay, we try to go forward. So now you see, if, I, I, I notice that tractor wants to go up, but the trailer is stopping it because the trailer brakes are on right now so that means it's good it's a good sign all right step number nine is drain the air tanks to drain the air tanks what we need to do is uh, the air tanks are at the outside so we need to drain it from outside in order to see uh, which tank we are draining so we got three tanks in total we got the wet tank which is also called the supply we got the primary and the secondary which are known as service tanks so we need to first drain which tank first always the wet tank okay so we need to identify where the wet tank is right so I need to bring the pressure down to 100 first so every time you do the um, your air tank or draining the air tanks, you always want to check to see where the uh, uh, your actual air tanks are. So make sure your, your pressure is at 100. You turn off your engine. Okay, now I know where my gauges are sitting at. Okay, okay. So here we got uh, two air tanks over here, one in the front here, one over here, and then I got one on the other side. Okay, so. I know what my air tanks are, where my air tanks are, where, which one's the primary, which one's secondary, which one's the wet tank. But for people like, you know, who have no uh, labels and stuff like on the uh, drain valves, they can't really tell which one is which. So the best way to uh, check them is doing the manual way, which means you pull this valve, this uh, the drain valve for about five to seven seconds and you look inside uh, on the gauges to see which whichever dropped for, uh, below the 100 PSI, right? So I'm going to pull this one for about four to seven seconds. Okay, and then I go step inside the truck to see which which one dropped the pressure. So they both are still sitting at 100. So that means that's my wet tank. So it didn't move at all. So if they don't move at all, so that means that's the wet tank because the wet tank doesn't have any gauge. So I found my wet tank here. Okay. So since I found my wet tank, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna drain it. I'm gonna look underneath the tank to see what kind of moisture is coming out. So I'm gonna pull it. Okay. So I don't see any oil, any moisture coming out of the drain valve here and my drain valve is working properly, okay? Then I move on to the next one over here, which I need to check it to see which one is this one, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go inside quickly and check to see which one was that. All right, so that, that happened to be the secondary one. Okay, so this is my secondary air tank. What I need to do with the secondary air tank is, now I'm gonna pull this one and look for any abnormal discharge. Okay. I don't see any normal discharge. Uh, I don't see any uh, discharge here or any oil or any moisture coming out of and my drain valve is working fine. Then I do the same thing on the other side to my primary drain valve. So, so I got another drain valve here. So I'm going to pull that one and I don't need to go inside because I know for the fact that this is the primary because I already checked my uh, wet tank and the secondary. And I look underneath. Okay. I don't see any oil, any moisture, and my drain valve is working fine. Now, since if you have the trailer attached, right, to the tractor, you gotta go and drain the air tanks on the trailer as well, too. So you go under the trailer, and this is the drain valve that's attached to the trailer here, air tank, and you pull it, okay. My drain valve is working and there's no oil, no moisture coming out of the air tank. So that means it's working perfectly all right. And that completes my drain the air tank. This uh, topic we need to understand how do we do the brake adjustment, okay? How do we check for the brake adjustment? So very first thing you got to do before you do the brake adjustment is you got to secure your vehicle, okay? So you got to put the wheel chocks back on the trailer tires. If you're only doing the tractor, then you put it on the tractor tires.
¿Sí? Make sure your engine is on. Okay, you release your tractor and trailer parking brakes both. Okay, both of brake needs to be released. Your tractor and trailer. If you're only doing the tractor uh, check, then you only release the tractor. If you're doing the trailer as well, then you gotta release both of them to make sure the tractor and trailer both are released. And make sure your pressure on the uh, gauges should be between 90 to 100 psi. So right now the brake, uh, the pressure is between 90 to 100. All right. Okay, and then you gotta turn the wheels to the left. If you're doing the left side, if you're doing the right side, you turn the wheels to the right. Okay. So once you're on, then you shut off your engine. Okay. And then you gotta step outside with your tools. Okay. And what we need to carry is uh, we need to carry this measuring caliper. We need to carry this uh, tape measurement, a soapstone which you can make a reference point, and the chart where it has all the brake adjustment limits and your uh, two by four, that's what we use it for to press the brake pedal with, okay. Now we're gonna open the hood. Okay. And now we have to check the, the brake chamber here. So the very first thing we need to do is to check the outside diameter of this chamber here. Okay, so for that we need to use this caliper. Okay, so you're gonna put it on the outer clamp here and then the other side, make sure I tied it. Okay, so this is good on the both sides. Okay, and now I have to measure that on the tape measurement. And then see, what's the number? The number is showing 172 millimeters right here. Yep, 172 millimeters. Now, if I check that on the uh, the chart here, so 172 millimeters, I got two of them here, okay? So, which is size 20 and 20L. So, in order to check if it's a long stroke or regular, I need to go back to the chamber and look for the tag here, which is a blue tag, and the square bump over here on the side, okay? So, this is, that means it's a 20L chamber, okay? So, L stands for long stroke. So, the 20 L chamber adjustment limit is 51 mm or 2 inches. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to make a reference point. Okay. So, we get that soapstone out. Okay. And then we mark on the push rod. Make sure that any other mark that you have it already on the push rod, make sure you delete that or erase that or you wipe it off and you make another mark over here. Okay. So, that's my reference point. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to press the brake pedal okay I need to hold the brake pedal with the brake body that we use okay and on the other side on the seat here and I press the brake pedal in okay and my pressure is between 90 to 100 still good and then I check to see how far the push rod traveled so I tr check it from here until this mark that I made it so it's, it came out one and a half inch so which is good because our maximum was uh, if you look at the 51 mm as a two inches so it was one and a half inch came out so it's good because it's within the two inches range okay now if it, if it's more than two inches then it's bad then that means it's out of adjustment and then we have to put the truck out of service now the last question on this part two is the uh, indicate the correct response to the defective vehicle condition. What would you do if you find your brake brakes are out of adjustment? So there are three things that you need to do, right? You got to make a written report, you got to inform your operator, and you're going to put the truck out of service. For any major defects that you see on the truck during your inspection, make sure you remember three things. Make a written report, inform your operator, and put the truck out of service. <laughs>